fighting extremism not with weapons, but with food. The World Food Programme says it's on the front line of the battle against terrorism in a race to get food to the world's most vulnerable before insurgents do. It is the most effective program out there, dollar for dollar, for fighting extremism. Because if a mom and dad can't feed their children after a week or two, and the only available place you can feed your little girl is turned to the only available source out there, you go do it. And we're seeing it. We're seeing it left and right. Studies have shown that militant groups position themselves as social service providers to help recruitment. Hamas and Hezbollah use that approach, making food a simple but effective tool. If you can't f feed yourself or feed your family, you'll go to extreme measures. And if ISIS or Al-Qaeda or Boko Haram is dangling a banana in front of you, you're going to take it, right? It's a necessity. But while food insecurity can create fertile ground for extremism to flourish, some say it's only part of the problem and that marginalization is often a greater motivating factor for joining militant groups. If people feel that their food insecurity is as a result of actions to deny them opportunity and inclusion, then they might begin to take up arms against the state, against their fellow countrymen. So we need to understand what is the additionality that pushes people to get over the, the cliff, as it were, and become violent extremists. The WFP argues that its work is vital in helping international security. It's therefore concerned by the Trump administration's plans to cut American funding to the UN, feeling it has the potential to hurt US national security in the long run. The new head of the WFP, David Beasley, is a former US Republican governor. But he's going against the prevailing mood in his party. And he's now asking the US Congress to increase, rather than cut, funding to help famine-threatened countries like South Sudan, Nigeria and Somalia. Nick Harper, CGTN, New York.